Before we begin today's video, we just want to remind you that our next mail-in tournament is coming up. If you want to take part, go check out the Races and Fun Facebook page for more information. But for now, welcome to day number three of the Widowmaker Tournament. We've had some wacky events happen already, a lot of which involve that bump near the end of the track. And let's see the first group for today that will tackle it. The Ford Shelby, the Batmobile, the Plymouth, and the 65 Mustang. Here we go! The two in front will, for now, be the 65 Mustang and the Plymouth. Right now, though, it is the Mustang that is out in front with the Batmobile not too far behind them. Just because you start in front doesn't mean you'll stay that way. That first lane in the first turn can change absolutely everything. And the Batmobile is trying to pass the Mustang so far is unable to do so. They go around that turn and the Mustang is trying to get that gap to widen, but instead it flips as the Batmobile now has the lead, they go into the last turn, what will happen as they go over this bump? The Batmobile, and the Mustang for that matter, stay close to the ground, and the Batmobile takes the lead. We'll have to see what time they get in a second. Here come the Plymouth, and the Shelby. An 18.5, that is not quite the fastest time. The fastest time we've had so far was done by the Ford Mustang in the last video, with a time of 16.7656. But for now, this particular part of the track is gonna flip a lot of people, both figuratively and literally. We've seen people, they will start out strong, but once they get to that part of the track, they will flip over, start sliding down the track on their backs, and they might end up in last for all they know. Just because you're in first until near the end, as they say, it is not over until it's over. And Batmobile, and THE Batmobile, I should say, currently has the first win, so that puts them in a much better position, and they will start out in front in this leg. With the Mustang not too far behind them, and once again, they are taking a bit of a lead, and they pass in front of the other two. And it seems like these two are relatively evenly matched, as are the other two with each other. And because the Batmobile is already out in front, he might have a slightly easier time as he goes further down the track. And the Mustang actually loses a bit of ground bouncing off the walls a little bit, but so does the Batmobile. The Batmobile does go airborne, he flips onto his back like I said might happen, and the Mustang passes him, spins around, but manages to finish, allowing him to take first place, and the Batmobile does not finish unless he gets nudged far enough forward, but that is not going to happen. The Ford Shelby finished in second, and they are the only two that will finish. The Plymouth stopped just short, and the Batmobile could not stay on its wheels. I was just talking about how this kind of thing can happen, and lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Let's take another look. He was okay until he hit the downward slope, and then he flipped over and could not correct it. Some vehicles have done that, but not so far the Batmobile. And then here come these two. As they go up the hill, they have just the right amount of speed to where they stay on the ground, which may actually be the better strategy overall. But with that, the Batmobile is already stopped from staying undefeated. Speaking of which, so far we actually have had no racers be undefeated, at least up to this point. Some of them have gotten pretty close, but obviously pretty close is not completely. And this is kind of surprising, because usually by now, in the first day or two, we have at least one racer that finishes undefeated, but not yet. As we get into this third race, though, once again, the Batmobile and the Mustang are out in front. And they are staying relatively close together, but that could change. It seems like when the Batmobile is in front, he is able to widen that gap. The Mustang struggles to do that a little bit. And that gap is, in fact, widening, although Batmobile did lose a little bit of speed there. He goes over the hill, is able to stay on his wheels this time, and because of that, he was able to stay in front and finish. But the, the 65 Mustang wasn't so lucky, and the Ford Shelby once again takes advantage and finishes in second. He actually knocks the Mustang off the track. That is a bit of a dirty move. If nothing else, that is definitely salt on the wound, but I'm sure there are a lot of Mustang fans that will not be happy to see that. And it's just poor sportsmanship, if nothing else. And someone could get 
critically injured or worse, uh, let's just say it could be fatal. Here comes the Plymouth, and once again they have just enough speed to get over that hill. I think we've had one or two racers so far. Oh wait a minute, the Batmobile actually has the new fastest time! 15.6692! We've seen a lot of racers struggle to break 18 seconds or 17 seconds. The Batmobile broke 16 seconds. So even if he's not undefeated, the Batmobile at least now has the fastest time we've seen so far. Okay, here we go, into the fourth race now. Right now, because of multiple non-finishes, this is still very much up in the air for some of these racers. And right now the Mustang is in front of the Batmobile, but that gap is so small they're practically touching. Around that turn though, the Mustang did get a little bit of an advantage and launch himself forward. The question is, will, we, will he be able to hold on to it as the Batmobile is creeping up behind him, trying to find a way around, so far unable to do so, and the Mustang is still out in front. Going over that hill, he stops the Batmobile temporarily, but he flips over. The Batmobile is backwards, but he's still on his feet and he manages to have enough speed to finish in first, and the Shelby almost actually stole first place, but the Batmobile was able to stay in first, and the Ford Shelby, three times in a row, was able to take full advantage of somebody flipping over and passing them for second place. The question is, will it be enough? The Batmobile is moving on, it's just a matter of who is going to join them. That was a bit of a commotion between the Batmobile and the Mustang going over that hill. Like I said, you could be doing well up until that spot and then suddenly everything gets flipped. Literally. Now, this was a much slower time, so I guess Batman had a lot of control in that last race to get a faster time by about 4 seconds compared to this one. The Plymouth wasn't able to get around the Mustang, so he doesn't finish either. And it is, in fact, the Ford Shelby who will be moving on. I know a lot of people don't like him because of the move he pulled on the Mustang earlier, but he is moving on. And in this group, we have the Acura, the Toyota, the Mustang, and the Vendetta. Some very cool-sounding names here. And as we begin in the first race, it looks to be the Toyota and the Vendetta out in front right now. Although these four seem to be a little bit more even in terms of where they're placed. Because before it was like two pairs of two. I guess that's kind of redundant, but you get the point. But now all four are relatively close together, at least to some degree. Almost evenly spaced, actually. But the Toyota is currently out in front as they approach that bump. And he does go airborne, but manages to quickly fix it. And the Vendetta almost catches up to him going backwards. And then Akura finishes in fourth. Let's take another, another look at these launches. These are going to be some of the most epic replays I'm sure we will have seen in a long time. He kind of pulled a bit of a James Bond thing where he launched into the air and started rotating, but he went back on his wheels, kind of grinded the rail for a second. But he was able to stay on his wheels, thus being able to finish in first. They did finish a little bit slower than some, but right now all you need to do is move on. Now, as we look at the totals, the Toyota is currently the one who has a chance at staying undefeated. If he does not do it, then we will go three consecutive videos right from the start where no one is undefeated. So far, the Toyota is right behind the Vendetta. In fact, he's almost pushing him along a little bit. And I'm sure now he wants to find a way to get around him. The question is, will he be able to do so? Vendetta is currently successful at blocking him. But the Toyota is trying to find his way around, going from side to side, trying to look for an opening. And the Vendetta is managing to block him, but he got spun around in the process. And the Toyota is trying to stop him again. And now all three of these vehicles are in a jam. The Vendetta is back out in front, going over that hill. The Toyota is trying to find a way to pass him at the last moment, so far unable to. And the Vendetta manages to hold on to first. What a race! It looked like the Toyota had many opportunities to pass the Vendetta at various points on the track, and even if he passed in front of him for just a moment, the Vendetta found a way to stop it from happening. And it is now due to that 
that we will now go three videos where no racers have not lost a single race. And we actually almost got into the 20 second area on that one. But now the Toyota and the Vendetta are tied for first with eight points apiece. So the odds are definitely tipping in their favor right now as the other racers only have four and two points respectively. And this third race though, the Akura is quickly falling behind while the other three are staying relatively close together. But now the Toyota and the Vendetta are taking off. Trying to get that gap to be much bigger between them and the other racers. And once again, we're in a very familiar scenario. The Toyota is finally trying to find a way to pass a Vendetta, but instead, it's the Mustang GT coming out of nowhere and passing both of them. They saw the scuffle, they saw an opening, and they took it. And they have the right amount of speed to stay on their feet, and they will barely finish in first. I was about to say they will, but they slowed so far down near the end that I wasn't sure. But take a look at this. They have just the right amount of speed to where they don't go too far into the air to the point where they might risk flipping over. And these other two, who were really good up until now, their scuffle allowed for someone else to pass both of them. The Toyota was focusing so hard on the Vendetta, he forgot about the Mustang. An absolute crazy finish. One that I'm sure no one saw coming. And that definitely helps out the Mustang GT a little bit. If they can do that again, they might actually be moving on. And they are starting out in front, so they do have a slight edge here. And the Vendetta is pushing the Toyota along, and they are trying to get in front of that Mustang. But the Mustang actually gets between them and loses a little bit of momentum, and he slows down the Vendetta in the process. The Toyota, as a result, has a much bigger lead now highly increasing their odds of moving on and placing in the top spot of these four racers. Here they go into the last turn. Will they be able to stay on their feet as they go up that hill? They do. In fact, that was a very clean jump. Even if they bounce a little bit, they didn't really flip or rotate much at all. And they finish in first. They will be moving on. And who's that in second? It's actually the Akura. The Akura managed to somehow finish in second. The Vendetta finished in third. And here comes the Mustang GT, whose hopes were brought to life after that third race, but are now dashed. A very valiant effort by the Akura. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. I believe the Vendetta will still be moving on along with that Toyota. We'll have to double check once we get through these replays. It looked like everyone was able to stay on their feet that time. In fact, uh, two of them almost seemed magnetized to the track, as I don't think they went airborne at all. The Mustang was actually going backwards up to this point, and they also stayed completely attached to the track. A much better time of 17.59, though. And you can see the other races coming up in the back. Actually, the Mustang GT, from the looks of things, almost got stopped on that last turn. But they still at least made an effort to finish and they just barely did so. But will it be enough? No, they got close! But the Vendetta will still be moving on alongside the Toyota. And now for the finals of today. These four racers are definitely ones to keep an eye on. That Ford Shelby, even if they're not the fastest racer, they're still one of the smartest racers I've seen in recent memory. Where even if they don't start out well, they might find a window, they might take an advantage of it, and do much better than anyone might be anticipating. As we begin in this last group though, it is the Batmobile once again out in front. He's not undefeated, but he currently does have the fastest time, and it looks to have the better odds of moving on. And we will remind you that the top two will be moving on for now, so even if someone doesn't finish in front of the Batmobile, there are others who will have a chance to move on. The Ford Shelby, once again, actually manages to finish in second. Another example of smart racing where they will position themselves even when they're upside down in such a way that they will be nudged forward across the finish line and stopping someone else in the process. I don't know if that's dirty racing, smart racing, or both, but they are absolutely crazy. The Ford Shelby thinking he will not finish at all, still managed to finish in second in the end. 
take a look at this. He's on his side, but he pos positions himself in just a way where the Vendetta blows through both vehicles, but only manages to push one of them forward, and he stops the Vendetta from finishing at all. The Vendetta and the Toyota, who did really well before, are now in much bigger trouble. Here we go into heat number two. Things just really got turned on their heads. Right now, the Batmobile and the Toyota are in the front spots, but the Vendetta is quickly pushing the Batmobile along, trying to grab second place, so far unable to do so, and they lose the momentum in the process, and now the Toyota is fighting with the Batmobile for first place. The Batmobile is putting in a lot of effort right now to not only stay in first, but block the Toyota from passing him, which I guess involves staying in first, but you get the idea. And now he goes up that hill, almost flips over, but manages to stay on his feet and finishes in first yet again. Now he just got to get one more to guarantee a spot in the grand finals. And he finished with a 16.99. I guess at this point I can say that anything below 17 seconds is very promising. Now let's take another look. Batmobile goes up, shakes a lot, stays on his feet. The Toyota seemed to flip over, but I think he did manage to correct himself in the end. The Vendetta stayed close to the ground. And as for our other friend, who's way back there, he did at least get over the hill, but he didn't have a lot of speed. He almost got slowed at the top of that hill, which is a rarity, but definitely possible. We'll have to check the standings again in just a moment, but I think the Ford Shelby has the best odds of moving on with the Batmobile right now. Actually, no, that was the Ford Shelby. What am I talking about? Yet they finished in last, and the Toyota finished in second. So in terms of overall points, the Batmobile does have the best edge right now. But all the other racers have so few points. The Ford Shelby does have four, so they technically do have the best odds out of the other three. But the Vendetta and Toyota have two and three, so they could theoretically take that spot away. Right now, the Vendetta and the Toyota are fighting for first place, and the Mo and the Batmobile is trying to play catch up. He's got he's gotten right beside the Toyota, but the Toyota blocks him completely, and now they're all clamored together while the Vendetta takes advantage and goes way out in front of them, allowing him to get a win. And the Batmobile still at least manages to finish in second. Definitely not what anyone was expecting. It looked like the Batmobile was in a good position to get a sweep out of that, if nothing else. But that was denied by the Toyota blocking him for a good chunk of that stretch up there. That being said, the Batmobile did finish in second, and the Ford Shelby, who looked absolutely promising. It seemed all their luck was used on that first group they appeared in. Now all that luck seems to be running out, as well as their time in this tournament. But now the Batmobile has 11 points, and the Vendetta comes up in second place right now with 7. However, the Ford Shelby still has 5. So really, this is anyone's game right now. The Batmobile is definitely moving on, it's just a matter of who will join them. It could very well come down to who finishes in front of the others between those other three. Right now, the Vendetta has the best odds as he also has the most points and is out in front right now. The Batmobile is trying to pass him. So far, the Batmobile's passing game has not been the greatest. And he's gonna try it once again against this Vendetta, but those wheels could be a problem for him with how big they are. And so far, that is the case. The Batmobile's trying to pass him yet again, fails to do so, and he is blocked. And it looked like the Ford Shelby might have been able to pull off a miracle. But I think the part of the track might have actually stopped him. We'll have to see if it was the cars or the track or some combination of the two. But any chance the Ford Shelby had of moving on might have just been crushed. Here comes the Toyota and the Vendetta, both going airborne. Actually, the Vendetta didn't really go too far into the air. Let's take another look at this. The Vendetta seemed like they finished in first and then we'll be moving on.
It is the Vendetta. The Vendetta will be moving on alongside the Batmobile. 